Hello again, we're at 7.7b, and we're going to talk about the line of best fit, which is also called a trend line. We can take the data from a table as ordered pairs, like a function table. We can draw a line that best approximates the linear relationship, and this line is the line of best fit. It's a trend line. So let me show you one really quick over here. Look at this. This is a scatter plot. See how the information is just scattered all over the place? So the line of best fit is a line that best represents the data on the graph. See this? On the plane. So you can see we've got points that are above and below the line. And we try to draw the line so that we've got about as many above it as we do below it. And if you squinted at this and there was no line there at all, just the points, you'd kind of be able to see that there is a line kind of going downhill. See? And we ignore the ones that are way far away, and we stick with the ones that are kind of clustered together. So the line of best fit for this is the one where I drew the red line through it, because that closely represents what this cluster of points is doing. See? So that's a trend line. And a trend line is a line that comes closest to the points on the scatter plot. We use a straight edge to draw a line that is approximately the same amount of points above it as below it. We ignore any of the outliers, any of those points that are far from the rest. And we can use the slope of the line to write an equation and make predictions about data that's not shown on that graph. So when we use a trend line as a line of best fit or its equation to predict the value between two points of data that we already know, we interpolate the predicted value. So that's a new word for you that you might want to write down. Interpolate means to insert a value between other values in a series or calculate from surrounding values. So we have a cluster of points here. I drew a pink line through them. And you can see I've got points above and below the line. But we could interpolate that if this point's here and this point's here and this point's here and it's making a straight line and we've drawn the line through that point, that any point on this line would make an equation or it would be the answer to the data. See? So if we know that negative 2, negative 1 is a point and 8 and 4 is a point, we know that anything between them can be interpolated as a point. See? Now, when we make a prediction outside or beyond the data that we know, so it would be off the chart, off the graph, then we extrapolate the predicted value. And extrapolate means to estimate values outside the known range. So if we've got uh, this cluster of points and we connected them with this blue line, and we wanted to say, well, what would be the point over here? Could we say that there would be a point over here that would be on that line? Well, yeah, we can extrapolate that that would be a value because it continues on towards that point, see? So if we had a function table with x and y values like this, we can see here's our negative 8, negative 4, see that? And that is an x and y value on our function table. And we can see that a 2 and a 1 is also an ordered pair, see? And 4 and 2 and 6 and 3, here's 4 and 2 and 6 and 3, and look, 8 and 4. So what would be after that? Well, 10 would be here with a 5, wouldn't it? And then we could do 11 and we could do 12. So we could extrapolate that 12 and 6 would also work because look at what it's doing. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And this one's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the negative 8 and negative 4, I didn't put any points in between them, and that's why it skipped to, to such a different number here. But if we wrote in the points, then they would skip by 2s also. See? So we can extrapolate that 12 and 6 would be x and y values. So we can take the points 2, 1, and 4, and 2, and can use these points to approximate the line and find the slope m. So we use our slope formula the second y value minus the first y value on top of the second x value minus the first x value. And we can use these ordered pairs from our function table as our x1, y1, x2, y2. And we find the slope, and it turns out to be a half. And then we put it into slope point-slope form, like this. And we use a random x, y. So here's our random y. 
minus y1, so minus the 1, and we take our slope that we found, this half, and we multiply it by a random x minus our x1, which is a 2, see? Now we covered this in the previous video, so if you haven't seen it, there'll be a link to that in the description, okay? So now that we've done this and we've written it in point slope form, we can use a distributive property to solve this. And we get y minus 1 is equal to a half times x, and then a half times a negative 2, well, that gives us a negative 1. The positive half times a negative 2 gives us a negative 1. Now we need to get rid of this negative 1 next to the y, so the y can be isolated by itself, so we can solve for y. So we add a positive 1 to each side, and that creates a 0 pair here, doesn't it? And that eliminates that one. And now we have y equals half x plus 0 because a negative 1, positive 1, see? So our y-intercept b should be at a 0. And you know what? The line does intercept the y-line at the 0 at the origin right there. Look at how that happened. And we don't have to write the plus 0. We can just write y equals half x. And this equation should be made true by all of these values that we found on the line. So let's try it. So if we have y, then let's use the 6 and half, it, it should equal half times x. Half times 12, well, yeah, that is a 6, so it is true. See, it made it true. So remember, the line of best fit is the line that goes through the data, the scatter plot with all the clusters that makes it represent the data the best, okay? Now, a lot of this that I'm talking about is not really covered in the Algebra 1 textbook that I've been using, but that's the Prentice Hall Algebra 1 textbook. It doesn't cover most of this information. It talks to you like you're a baby and says the line of best fit, and it doesn't call it a trend line, which is its correct term. Algebra 1 is usually taught in the 8th grade, and the Go Math 8th grade textbook does cover this. It's at a higher level. It's a better textbook. And this is actually an introduction to statistics and may be useful for high school and college. So the way that lessons are taught in school is they first teach you a basic lesson about it, and then the next year you learn a little bit more about it, and the next year you learn a little bit more about it, so it's layered. So it's really important that if you've never heard of outliers or scatter plots or clusters or interpolate, trend line, extrapolate, it might be good if you want a well-rounded education to see the link in this description to my playlist called Scatter Plots. And there's not that many in there. You could watch every single video in under an hour that, it's not a long playlist. And then you'll learn more about lines of best fit and trend lines, and you'll have a better education. And then when you go to take to statistics, it won't be so far out and crazy with weird words. You'll have heard of them before, okay? Our next video is going to be 7.8a. We're going to talk about parallel lines on a coordinate plane. And if you want links to the previous videos of point-slope equation or slope-intercept equation, here is slope-intercept form. Okay, and point slope is the one we did here. And if you want to know about how to graph using intercepts, like that y-intercept b, or learn how to find a slope from an equation, all of those links are going to be in this description, okay? Plus the scatter plot one, all right? So keep up the good work. Keep trying. Keep plugging away at this. We can get through this together, and you'll be fine, all right? Bye.